course, Donald Trump going after another politician. It involves gun control. It involves Beto O'Rourke. Trump uh, is blaming, he's calling him Dummy Beto now. That's his new name for, for Beto. Dummy Beto for th this gun situation. Now, as you remember, you remember this. He was on the stage last week in the Democratic presidential uh, debate, and he said, hell yes, we're going to take your AR-15, your AK-47. Now, listen, I think we all kind of agree on this, that he went a little bit too far there. He probably shouldn't have said that. In a perfect world, it'd be nice if all assault weapons were off the streets. It's just not going to happen, and you're not going to get anything done with Republicans by, with that kind of language. So, yes, I think Beto made a mistake, but you know what? I understand why he said that. This is his hometown. He's seeing people get plowed down and gunned down by, by these weapons. It was emotional. But, I, it, you know, it's one thing to be emotional and try to do the right thing. It's another thing to be emotional and just be a jerk. You know, Trump does it every day. So he calls Beto dumb, and he tweets out, Dummy Beto made it much harder to make a deal, convinced many that Dems just want to take your guns away. We'll continue forward. By the way, that's not true. It is a right-wing talking point. When talking about guns, they say Democrats want to take all your guns away, and that is completely not true. Even Beto wasn't saying that. Beto was saying he wants to take your assault weapons away. He wants that to be mandatory. That is a different cry from all your and, weapons. And he wants to compensate you for it because it's a buyback program. Exactly, exactly. He's not saying he's going to take it. Which is a little different than, than just standard confis confiscation. Right, but if you talk to people on the extreme right, or not even people on the extreme right, any most people on the right, when it's about this gun control issue, they think that Democrats are just going to take all your guns away. That's not true. I don't understand that argument. So what does Donald Trump do? And you know, he calls him a name. He calls him dumb. Okay, listen, I'm not a big Beto O'Rourke fan. I've said that from the beginning. Just not a huge fan of the guy. With that being said, I thought he showed a lot of leadership after these mass shootings, particularly the one in El Paso, and then we had another shooting in Texas uh, about a week and a half ago. You know, he's been out there. He's been meeting with the families. He went. He even went to a gun show. And spoke to people. I give him credit for that, for at least trying. You cannot tell me that Mitch McConnell is trying. You cannot tell me that Donald Trump is trying. You cannot tell me that the majority of Republicans in office are actually trying to do something about this problem. Because they are not. Just because you disagree with the policy, I wouldn't call Beto dumb. I think he made a mistake. But that's the way Donald Trump handles this situation. You know, it's crazy. We talked about this all the time, you know, about the uh, the vaping situation, right? I believe seven people have died from vaping. And that's not even from the actual vaping itself. It's from putting crap in there that you shouldn't be putting in there. So seven people die. At the time, I think it was six people. And what does Donald Trump do? He puts the hammer down, man. We need legislation when it comes to vaping. We need to get rid of this stuff. And, and, and he's putting some stuff into law. Six people have died. Since he's been in office, I believe 40,000 people have died from gun violence. What has Donald Trump, besides getting rid of bump stock stocks, what else has Donald Trump done? What has Mitch McConnell done? The answer is nothing. And sadly, there is a reason for that. And the reason is money. The reason is the NRA. Because Republicans want to simply say... And we'll talk about Corey Lewandowski. And I, don't, his I don't think it's. I think it's just the fact that he's he's weighing his position. He's trying to see what how how aggressive he goes against gun control if it will really affect his chance of winning the the twenty twenty election. He doesn't want to polarize his own his already strong budding fan base. Well, there you go. And it's so more important for him to think like that and to think about votes than to do what is best for the country. I feel the same way about Mitch McConnell. He just doesn't want to. Hurt his base, doesn't want to piss off the NRA. This is politics today. And listen, it happens on the left with other I, issues I, I as well. I don't think it's about the NRA. I think it's about gun owners themselves. Well, it's absolutely a part we, of the we, NRA. We've had, we've had a couple of callers call in and say, hey, if Donald Trump does anything with gun control, that we will not vote for him next year. JD, we, we will not support him next year. I we, just, we've had a couple of callers do that. Okay, but I, just, I, I, think, I think Trump knows that these people exist across the United States, and he doesn't want to lose them. Okay. And he's trying to figure out how to not lose them. As well as curtail the issue that's, you know, the, the, the massive gun issue that we've, we've seen taken over the media the last three or four months. Okay, but you have to say this is uh, a part, partly because of the NRA. And the reason why I bring that up is we could just make the example of what happened uh, at the Walmart in, in El Paso, Texas. 
where Donald Trump was immediately talking about gun reform. He was talking about gun legislation. He was talking about comprehensive background checks. And then what happens? He meets the, with the director of the NRA for a few meetings, and then right after those meetings, he changes his tune. So you cannot tell me that this has nothing to do with the NRA. It absolutely does. Is it the only factor? No, probably not. But absolutely the NRA is, is a part of this situation. And it is influencing politicians, starting with the president of the United States all the way down. And Mitch McConnell is a complete useless coward. That's exactly what he is. But they lost seventeen million dollars last year, Brian. The the fees Good. The, the fees are thirty five dollars a year. Now, is it very possible that all of or that a lot of Trump's base are members of the NRA? Yes, but I don't think the NRA is, is lining his pockets again. Trump is a he doesn't need the money. They are one, pressuring one thing, him. One thing that separates Trump from the last 20 presidents, is that he does not need the money. Okay, so explain this to me then. Then why is it that he changed his tune after the director of the NRA, Le Perrier, I believe his name is, why is it that he changed his opinion and changed his tune right after those meetings? Is that just a coincidence? Because I'm sure that the NRA said, hey, a lot of our a lot of our members do vote for you, and you need to consider how you want to go about this. Okay, well, whatever, if that's... I don't think he lined his pockets. I think he gave him a fair warning. Okay, but that's... Which, that, obviously, he took into consideration. Obviously, he did. So my point stands. Which, as he should, as he, as he is the president of the United States. It should change his mind based on uh, an no, organization I'm just pressuring saying, him? I don't think that it changed his mind, but I think that it, he definitely... Well, clearly it did. That he, that he took it into consideration. How could you say it didn't change his mind? A few days before I, I, he was talking. I don't think that that particular conversation was the only reason he changed his mind. But again, he took it into consideration because it, it's his fan base. It's, all it's, I know it's is his, it's his consumer base. The, all, NRA, the NRA has roughly, I think, thirteen or fourteen million members, which, listen, is, which is about two to three percent of the United States. All I know is that he was talking about comprehensive background checks twenty four hours before that meeting with La Perrier, and after that meeting with the director of the NRA. All he wants to talk about now is mental illness, and he's not talking about background checks. He's not talking about any type of, you know, gun reform. And I absolutely believe 90% of that reason is because of the NRA. And maybe the other 10% is votes. Who knows? I'm not, I, I don't know. But absolutely the NRA is responsible. And now he's going after Beto O'Rourke. And I give Beto credit, and many Democrats, even some Republicans, are giving him credit for showing leadership after these mass shootings in Texas. You can say he was a little bit emotional, and maybe he took it a little bit too far when he said he wants to take away your AR-15s and your AK-47s. But you have to know that his heart is in the right place. He doesn't want to talk to more families that have lost loved ones. He doesn't want to talk to more people that have been gunned down. In his state. And you know what? I don't blame him. And if you have a heart yourself and you care about people, then you should at least admit that these mass shootings are a problem. Even Ted Cruz, who I can't stand. Even Ted Cruz admits that this is a huge problem, these mass shootings. Now, maybe his idea of fixing the problem is different than Better O'Rourke, and that's fine. But you have to at least admit that these mass shootings are a huge issue. It is a problem, and Democrats and Republicans need to come together to fix it. Take a few phone calls on this before we go to break. 257-5396. Again, that number to call if you want to be a part of the conversation. 702-257-5396. I'll tell you one thing. It's not productive when you call Better O'Rourke dummy on social media and you're the president of the United States. That's not productive. Well, that's a really poor, that's a really poor nickname for him. Well, it, it, it just we sh the president shouldn't have nicknames well, I mean, for like anybody. Dummy, dummy, it's a disgrace. Well, what does dummy even mean? Well, it, it just means he's stupid. He, he talks like a it, ten. It, Trump, it, Trump. It, it just means he thinks he's unintelligent. I'm just saying, I think he can do better. Something, something more descriptive. How about something less broad? I got an idea. How about instead of a coming, more specific? How about instead of coming up with nicknames for politicians that maybe you disagree with? How about doing your job and and actually getting together with Democrats and trying to solve the problems of mass shootings in this country? How about that? How about taking less time on social media? He's the president of the United States. Stop calling uh, politicians dumb well, that you it, disagree it, with. It's kind of like his son calling teachers losers. Says those loser teachers. I talk about you talking about Biff. I'm, I'm talking. I'm yeah. talking about Donald yeah. Trump Jr. Yeah, that was that, another moronic that, that thing dummy. To do. Better. I mean, it's just. It's just very low brow. You can come up with better than dummy. Well, I don't know if Don Jr. can. I don't think. No, he, I, I don't. Well, I don't find Don Jr. very I, I intelligent. I know. I know Donald yeah. Trump can. I just. I just think <laughs> dummy is just. It, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, to Trump, it certainly means something. He took the time to tweet it on social media last night. Two five seven five three nine six. The number to call. Let's go to Mike. Mike, thanks for calling in to the Vegas Take. What's on your mind? What's up, Mike? Morning, guys. Good morning. So I'm just curious. It's a question. Um, 
Has anybody ever tallied up as far as you always talk about the NRA? Yes. What kind of money is the difference between the NRA and on the other side of it, uh, Bloomberg and Soros put into money into the anti-gun side of things? And, and how's that worked out? I'm asking you. You and talk I'm asking, about one side of it, but you never talk about the other well, side. Well, the of issue it. in this country is not we don't have enough guns. Have you ever heard that issue? Have any? Has, I'm not asking you that. I well, think I was pretty clear. You and and I'm being clear. You talk a lot about the NRA and their yes, influence. I do. But yes, you I do. never talk about the influence on the other okay, side. Okay, so if we're talking about guns and we're talking about influence with Democrats, which is clearly what you're trying to bring up, my question to you, because I'm very confused— what have Democrats done, and how have Democrats been influenced, and how have they been successful in taking guns away from you? Please explain one policy that has worked. I don't think any of them have worked. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Ridiculous. Thank you. So why are you bringing it up then? If nothing because worked. Because you always bring up one side of it because, and one influence. Because the actual influence on the president of the United States happened with the NRA. Do you not understand that? No okay. policies have happened on the left, and nobody influenced on the left have changed any policies when it comes to gun legislation or background checks or sure anything. They have. You haven't seen what Michael Bloomberg's been responsible What has been for? passed? What, demo- what has been passed in the last two years in regards to mass shootings that would, you know, maybe take away guns from people? Please explain. Michael Bloomberg has been was well influenced in Nevada the last time they put in okay, the, you're not, the, the last legislation. Okay, but I'm asking you nationally what has influenced, and you're not giving me a specific answer. I'm asking you because <laughs> you, you can't answer you the question. Cite it daily about the NRA and the all right. Influence. Hang on, hold, I'm Mike. You Mike, hang on, hold. Mike, we, Mike, comes in from Mike. The there's something. Side. There's something called a commercial break. Uh, those those com- those people who are sponsors. They're they're very influential of me. So I got to take a break. Hang on, hold if you would like, and we will continue this conversation on the other end. You are listening to The Vegas Take.